All right, wall fans, Facebook friends, social media world, welcome to episode 39 of Go Tell to Wall podcast. As always, I am your host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke. We are going fully live tonight for episode 39 of Go Tell to Wall podcast. As usual, I'm going to stop explaining it, keep doing it every week, say it every week. It is what it is. I'm sure Bridget will be joining us soon. I'm not positive on that, uh, but she will most likely be here. I don't think she had anything else going on, so she'll be here. Uh, unfortunately, when you don't pay your on-air producer at all, uh, you can't really require her to be here at all times. So, it happens. Uh, anyway, I'm going to adjust. Dealing with a new tripod this week that I just picked up, so we're getting used to it. I'm going to fix that a little bit. That's looking good. All right. Facebook friends, we are getting into it. Episode 39. Go tell us the wall podcast. Stick around. We're going to have some fun. I'll be paying attention to the comments when I can. If there's time, we'll see what happens. Okay, here we go. All right, Wall fans, that's right. Welcome to another exciting edition of Go Tell to the Wall podcast. This is episode 39. That's right, episode 39. We're putting down episodes just like they're going out of style. It's almost like we're doing them weekly. Oh yeah, we are doing them weekly. It happens. Anyway, let's get into it. It's episode 39. I am your host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke coming at you. We are live for those of you just listening on the podcast. We are live on Facebook this evening as per usual. So bear with us as we're looking through comments and all that other good stuff. But we are some fun tonight. I got all kinds of great topics for you. Uh, some fun stuff. A couple serious topics that I want to get into uh, as well. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. If you're listening on the podcast, um, stick around or hit pause when <laughs> when you walk away because you have the ability to do that. That's what's amazing is you can actually pause this thing. I know, most people can't handle listening to me for an hour straight. Trust me, I get it. Uh, the only people really that do are those of, those of you that probably, probably those of you that live in Los Angeles and have to sit in traffic for uh, two hours minimum every day. Then it's easy to get through. <laughs> but for the most part, I understand. If you can't listen to me for one hour straight, uh, trust me, Bridget, who is my on-air producer, I'm sure gets tired of listening to me talk every now and then. My wife <laughs> definitely gets tired of me talking every now and then. Just wait till my daughter hits like 13. She's going to be so embarrassed. So embarrassed. All right, let's get into it. We've already ta- we've already gone on a tangent. I'm, I'm st- I'm, we're, already, we're only in the opening and I've gone on a tangent. Ah, but do bear with me. I'm going to warn everyone just listening on the podcast. I kind of warned everyone on the Facebook live feed. I'm dealing with a new tripod this week. I'm still kind of trying to figure it out. I've got it positioned and I keep moving it around and it's a much better tripod, but I'm still getting used to it. So bear with me on that if I'm reaching over and kind of adjusting and doing all of that good stuff. It's funny though, I will tell you, I used to be so paranoid about extra noises and everything, especially living in and recording in Highland Park where there is fireworks and, and helicopters almost on a daily basis. And uh, I was listening to a little bit of uh, the uh, Kevin Smith's Babylon podcast the other day and even the great Kevin Smith had some background noise. So you know what, if we get some background noise, we get some damn background noise. I'm just kidding, I never really worry about that too much anyway. It's, kind of adds to it. Uh, All right, let's get into it. Social plugs, as always, especially for those of you just listening to the podcast uh, and not even on the feed. Uh, You can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash go tell it to the wall. Uh, Again, facebook.com slash go tell it to the wall. If you search go tell it to the wall, it's going to be the first thing that comes up. Uh, That's that's why I chose the name a couple years ago, uh, simply because it wasn't being used yet, and I like the name, so it's, it's the name. And you're able to find it that way. Additionally, you can find us on Twitter uh, at Tell the Wall Pod or at Magic Muppet. Follow both of those. Follow either one. Preferably follow both of them. We're building and building and building upon the Twitter presence. Uh, so daily, more stuff going out, new stuff going out, all that kind of good, good stuff. How many times can I say stuff in one sentence? Stuff, 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 stuff. It happens. You can tell it's not scripted. I'm not a freaking actor here. I'm just babbling to people. Uh, additionally, you can find us on YouTube, check out YouTube, constantly working on YouTube, getting all that organized, more content coming up on YouTube, uh, shortly as well, most likely after the holidays are over, we'll get a little bit more up there, uh, but, but most likely after the holidays are over, we'll kick into full gear with Go Tell It to the Baby and, and all that good stuff and get more of that up, uh, so search on YouTube, Go Tell It to the Wall, and of course, you can find all of that stuff 
on SeanRourkeLive.com. That's right, SeanRourkeLive.com is your central location for all that stuff. Uh, in addition to some some extra stuff, we have some some other videos and pictures and stuff up there. Um, and of course, Patreon uh, is is another one. But we're going to talk a little bit about that because stuff is going on with Patreon, and it's been a little ridiculous uh, as as far as that goes. Uh, but we'll get into that. We'll get into that, uh, and and just just be aware that I'm aware of it, and uh, and we're going to figure it out. Don't worry. Uh, all right. Additionally, I do want to to talk about one thing. I mentioned it on the teaser. It is a bit of the elephant in the room, uh, but that would be the fires in Southern California that are happening right now, really stretching from San Diego County all the way up to Ventura County, if you're not familiar with Southern California. Ventura is just north of LA County, and San Diego, it, you probably know, is just south of LA County. Well, south of Orange County, which is just south of LA County. And right now we're looking at just a firestorm pretty much everywhere. Now, currently I am safe, my family's safe, uh, in addition, my parents who are in San Diego are currently safe. That that could change at any moment. They are in a very, very high fire danger area. Uh, but I just want to point that out, and our thoughts are going out to everyone. And please bear with me uh, if, if I have to literally run out of the room. I could The, the studio door could literally open uh, if a new fire pops up, and, and I need to get out of here and, and go help where needed, especially if it's happening in, in uh, San Diego near my parents, or really or any of other, our other family or friends. Uh, we definitely have friends that are currently evacuated, luckily, all of my close personal friends, their houses are still safe, uh, but many, many people have lost their houses. Uh, so, so please send your thoughts our way in Southern California. It's, it's, I predicted it a while ago that it would be a terrible, terrible fire season. We were just waiting for it. Uh, we are near the end of the fire season, but everything is just kind of hitting the fan now, and, and we're really in it. So send all your, your thoughts and, uh, and, 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 and well wishes and everything else our way, please. Uh, in fact, now I'm getting messages on the Facebook uh, please stop bothering me on the Facebook. If you're watching the live feed, comment. Uh, do not send me messages because I can't look at them. I'm trying to do a podcast here. Uh, all right. So, additionally, I have a correction from last week. I was promoting Jimmy V Week last week. I'm not going to get into all the details of it, but Jimmy V Foundation for Cancer Research. And I made a mistake, and I knew, I actually, I, I, as I was doing it, I didn't realize he, he, uh, Jimmy Val, uh, Jimmy Val, I'm going to make sure I'm pronounced Valvano. I always want to say Valverde. Jimmy Valvano actually won a national championship at NC State, not UNLV. I don't know why I was confusing those two schools. I knew uh, that, he, that he had won a national championship at, at NC State, North Carolina State, but uh, for some reason I said UNLV. It happens. Uh, and thank you to uh, wall fan Kevin for pointing that out to me last week. And as soon as he pointed out, I said, oh, God, what the, why did I say UNLV? I don't even why I did that. Uh, so just a quick correction there. No one, most likely most of you didn't notice, but Jimmy Valvano did uh, win a national championship at NC State as opposed to UNLV like I'd said on the podcast last week. So forgive me. We make mistakes. I make mistakes sometimes really more often than not. The thing is most of you just don't really notice them because I don't call them out as much as I do like with that. Uh, and welcome to number one wall fan Darshan. Uh, for joining this week, you're you're early this week, Darshan. I think she's making up for missing a few uh, a few episodes there, but it's okay. We forgive you. Uh, holiday schedule. I mentioned this last week. Just want to let everyone know, we won't be recording next week. I will not be in the studio next Thursday. Uh, it, it holiday madness is descending upon my house. I have family coming into town and all this other stuff, so we won't be recording uh, next week. But we will be back the week after, most likely, and I'm not going to promise it now because i, I got to look closer at the calendar. Most likely the week after that will be the highly, highly anticipated first annual Go Tell the Wall Christmas special. That's right. The Go Tell the Wall Christmas special will most likely be happening uh, the week after next. Next week, no podcast. So if, if you don't see the podcast pop up, you don't see the live feed pop up, don't worry. It's simply because I'm stuck in holiday madness, and that's what happens this time of year. Uh, but we will be back with another episode, and with the Christmas special uh, before the end of the year. So so be ready for that. Be ready for that. I've actually got some big plans for the Christmas special, uh, and I don't know that it's going to happen, but I'm trying, trying, trying. I'm, we'll see what happens, but I'm trying to get some of the, the more important people from the podcast, such as Bridget, our on-air producer, and possibly number one wall fan, Darshan, into the studio for the Christmas special. We'll see if that actually happens. No promises. Uh, but if, if everything goes according to plan, I will do that, and we're going to do like a full-on Christmas party uh, for the Christmas special and have some fun with it. Have some fun with it. So lots of ugly sweaters, 
probably way too much booze and beer and, you know, I might allow whiskey in the studio for that episode, which means we will be off the rails before we even start. Uh, but look forward to that. Last thing I want to get to at the opening, and this is extremely important for those of you that listen and watch uh, that happen to be patrons on Patreon, there are some changes that came down. Now, I don't want to get into all of the details on the changes, but Patreon, essentially, let me tell you, Patreon got greedy. Patreon is a Silicon Valley company. They like to pretend that they're all about the creators and stuff because a couple of the people that founded it happen to be YouTube influencers and all this other stuff. Well, they decided to get greedy because they have some venture capitalist uh, investors, and that's what they're doing now. And we are navigating those waters to figure out how it's going to work best for all of our patrons. Uh, I, I will assure you, we have some time until the extra additional like service fees go through. So I will have it figured out before then. Just bear with me, if you are a pa- especially if you are a patron. If you're not a patron already, please check out patreon.com. Uh, you can just look up patreon.com slash go tell it to the wall. Uh, again, you can find it on Sean O'Rourke Live. It'll take you straight there and, and check that out. And you can become a patron. And if you do become a patron, don't worry about extra fees that are coming through. We're working through that. We're getting it figured out. Uh, and, and even if it's a matter of me doing some serious math so that you're only putting out as much as you had originally intended, uh, and, and I'm eating those fees, then that's that's worst case scenario, but that's what will be happening. I'm not putting extra fees on my patrons who are so kind to support the show financially when really you don't have to. I, I'm sitting here saying that. Go to Patreon and support financially, but you don't have to. This content goes out for free. This content is all 100% free, and it goes out that way. And the Patreon page really is just there to 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 support the podcast, to support Go Tell to the Wall, Go Tell to the Baby, all the YouTube stuff. Uh, and additionally, to find other creators that you can support. I, I will tell you right now, Mary Doodles is on Patreon uh, and, and uses it, as well as many, many other creators, such as John Rosenberg, who I mentioned many times on the podcast, uh, also has a Patreon page. So this is, that is a good place to support creators, support influencers, who put out content that you really like. Content, forgot the finger quotes, content that you really enjoy. So check out Patreon. Uh, just know that any creator you find on there is navigating the same thing that I just mentioned, and we it's all getting figured out. We're going to get there, so don't worry. Uh, don't be afraid of Patreon. Just just bear with us as we kind of navigate these waters over the next week and a half or, or two weeks. Or two weeks, whatever it might be. Oh, wow. What the heck? Are you guys getting me on? Oh, that was wild. Um, okay. Uh, apologies, wall fans, and apologies, especially if you're just listening on the uh, on the podcast. Uh, I think we just had a little power surge there. This has happened. This has happened before. Oh my! All right, Facebook Live, uh, please just bear with me here. Um, I've got to just get this. Uh, situated here. Facebook Live, please stick around. We just had a little power surge in the studio, which means I, I've still got you guys, interestingly enough. Um, but, uh, let's see if I can get this. Uh, okay. Oh, apologies, wall fans. We did. We had a little power surge there in the studio for just a moment, uh, and I've got it fixed now. So we did not lose the live feed, but I lost the... Uh, the actual podcast feed there, which does tend to be more important. Um, so thank you for bearing with us, Facebook Live. Wow, technical difficulties. Uh, and that's something else I really should have warned everyone else on because the power grid right now in Los Angeles is extremely, extremely taxed. Um, so I'm most likely not going to lose, lose Facebook uh, Live, but there's a chance that, that we're going to have to take a moment to kind of fix uh, fix our actual recording software here it happened I, yeah that, that was really strange i don't even understand what the heck happened that i think that was my uh, my doc here all right anyway apologies let's get into some social stuff let's get into some social stuff i've been ranting a little bit too much or tangenting a little too much uh let's let's do that because i've got the beer but we'll get into that in just a few minutes uh all right so let's move on to some social stuff invisible box challenge uh, Darshan, are you still there on the Facebook live feed? Because you are usually the one that comes out and says, well, I love that challenge. Invisible Box Challenge. If you guys haven't seen this one yet on all of the social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, and all that stuff, it hasn't quite taken taken social platforms by storm the way the planking did. And what was the, oh, the, I mean, the flash mobs. There was something else dumb. Darshan, remind me what the heck that was that, well, I don't want to say dumb. You loved it. I didn't like it. But this Invisible Box Challenge is the newest the newest craze that's hitting social media. Um, yeah. Oh, see, if Darshan doesn't even understand how it works, Darshan doesn't even understand how this works. She is usually the, the voice of reason when it comes to ridiculous. It's not a hoax, Darshan. It's never a hoax. Uh, but, 
Oh, I see what you're saying. So, actually, with the invisible box challenge, if you haven't seen this one, it, you're supposed to pretend that you're standing on a box and then standing over it. So you essentially hold one of your legs like in midair, and then the other leg comes over that leg, which feels like, uh, actually feels a little bit like a hurdler's exercise. <laughs> These are kind of the stretches that a hurdler would do on the track. Um, but if you haven't seen it, this is the newest uh, waste of time that all of the, the kids out in the world have found and have found a reason to post everywhere. Uh, so wall fans, I don't need to see your invisible box challenge. This goes right up there with all of the other stuff that we have seen over the years that's really just a waste of time. Eh, it's just a waste of time. Uh, and I will tell you, like I've said before, with all of these other stupid little challenges, if you really want to put something out into the social media world, show your talent. Don't just piggyback off some stupid trend planking. I mean, we're planking. Show some talent, even if you're even if you're not very talented. I'm not very talented. I'm minimally talented, minimally talented. There's not many things that I can do at a very elite level. One of them happens to be bullshitting and talking to a wall, and then making all of you listen to it. And trust me, you only get like an hour of it. I was just saying this last weekend to my friends. I was like, I'm 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 your your friendly neighborhood gas bag, you know? Because they have, like if I I went away for the weekend, Los Olivos. If, if friends and even my wife has to listen to me for like eight hours a day, it gets real old. It gets real old. But it's nice because you guys just consume like an hour a week, you know? So that's how that works. But as I was saying, show your talent, even, no matter what your talent is. If your talent is standing on your head, show that. If you need to put content out there in the world because you're like 18 to 25 or whatever, do something somewhat talented. Just put a little bit of effort into it. Don't piggyback off of all these stupid little trends that are going around because I'm over it. I'm over it. Um, all right, I have a fun one for social, and I want to encourage you uh, to, to check this one out yourself. I actually, I, I found this one particularly on Huffington Post, uh, but there's a lot of these out there uh, it, as far as reactions to something called Elf on the Shelf. That's right, Elf on the Shelf. If you haven't heard of this, I'm not even going to get into explaining it. It's something that started in 2005 because someone wrote a book. And here we go again with American capitalism just infecting a holiday and making it seem like it's a tradition because honestly I didn't even realize until a few days ago that this started in 2005. I thought this was like an old tradition that just I didn't do as a kid and was re reinvigorated you know at some point for the, this generation of kids. No, it came out in 2005 and they marketed the hell out of it and now all these kids have this little elf on the shelf and if you're not familiar with elf on the shelf this little elf appears every night different places in your home and he's watching your kids and he reports back to Santa to tell Santa if you've been good or bad. And it's a stupid little stuffed elf. I know, I know. Uh, but what's funny about it, and what's just, this is the kind of stuff that I like to find on social media as opposed to invisible box challenge. And that would be parents' reaction to uh, Elf on the Shelf. And I'm gonna go through, I have a couple of really, uh, really good ones for you. I'm just looking through here. Uh, where is the one? Oh, here's one, a tweet that came out. Parents, I'm begging you to stop upping the game for Elf on the Shelf. My he was supposed to move from shelf to shelf, not make my kids lunch. And this is where if you go through social media, you'll see parents have gotten extremely elaborate with their elf on the shelf and putting them into all kinds of stuff and, and different positions and, and all that kind of junk. Um, and uh, I'll just pull those here. there was another one on here. I can't find it now. Uh, but check these out. The elf on the shelf. And I will tell you, uh, in fact, I do have a funny story that I will tell you about. So I was talking to a friend of mine recently who has a son, 10 year old son. Uh, and this came up this year where she was like, maybe we're not gonna do Elf on the Shelf. Maybe he has grown out, grown out of it. And she's eating dinner uh, with, with her son. And her son asks about the Elf on the Shelf. And he said, isn't this about the time of year that the Elf on the Shelf usually comes out? And she was like, well, I've heard that the Elf, you know, usually when you hit about 10 years old, the Elf doesn't come. And I can't remember exactly what it was he said, but he looks at her and he was like, no, I, and guilted her into the Elf on the shelf. So she goes home and she tries to find the elf on the shelf, can't find the elf on the shelf. Ends up having to go out to Target and buy a new elf on the shelf. And in addition to that, apparently, this is something I just learned, all of the elf on the shelves, they have a bunch of different expressions. So it's not like you can just go out and replace the elf on the shelf with just whatever elf. You need to find the elf on the shelf that has the same expression as your kid's elf on the shelf that they had. This is the ridiculousness of the elf on the shelf. Uh, so I'm going to warn you parents out there, if you are going to do Elf on the Shelf, when you go to buy Elf on the Shelf, buy like five of them, because when one, essentially, like no doubt gets lost, you're going to have a backup. 
or at least two, at least buy two of them. Uh, but the Elf on the Shelf, I'm not getting behind it in our house. My wife and I agreed we're not doing Elf on the Shelf, just not doing it. Uh, I, I just, I, it, I don't know. I, I'm not saying I don't have the time and energy because I was out here two weeks ago putting a bunch of lights on my house and, and putting up all kinds of stuff and I basically spend my entire day revolving around my daughter. Um, however, I don't want to do Elf on the Shelf. We're just not doing it. We're not doing it. Uh, respect to you if you do do it. I don't think it's a bad thing. I just think it's 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 not something I'm going to do. Uh, but the hilarity is ridiculous. Look it up on Twitter. Uh, Huntington Post had an article with a bunch of them right there for you. I'm sure if you look at one of those clickbait sites like Ranker, um, BuzzFeed, BuzzFeed. Is there still a BuzzFeed? Yeah, probably. Uh, you'll be able to find it as well. Or just look through Twitter, um, you know. Um, yes. My mother is on here telling me uh, that, that my daughter has a direct line to Santa or her grandmother has a direct line to Santa. Yes, I'm very well aware of that, Ma. This is what happens. So I'm assuming you guys aren't on fire yet if you're watching my Facebook live feed. Um, all right, let's move on with social. This is one of my favorite things over the past week uh, is when it comes to social media. And that would be Senator John McCain from Arizona. So last week, he posted on Twitter. I'm sure he, he didn't post, but one of his, and I want to say this was last Friday because this was after last episode we recorded, posted on Twitter that they were nearing um, 3 million fans. Was it 3 million? Yes, they were nearing 3 million fans. They only needed like 70 some more followers to reach 30 or 3 million followers. So he put out a plea and he said, help us reach 3 million followers and all this other stuff. And let me point out to you wall fans, we don't get political or go tell us the wall, but we all know that there's a ridiculous tax plan that was just shoved through the Senate, shoved through the Senate. He did this on Friday. He did this while he was trying to shove a ridiculously, just ridiculous tax plan that leaves Americans just out in the cold. He's doing this, but at the same time tweeting that he needs more followers. Here's what I like about it. Twitter saw this. People on Twitter saw this. And they started unfollowing him in droves. In droves. In fact, it's still declining right now. And on top of that, I saw a few different people comment on Twitter that they followed John McCain just so they could unfollow John McCain. It's so good on you, Twitterverse. Good on you. We still need to work, work on getting the Orange Menace off, off of Twitter, uh, but good on you. Power of social media. And John McCain, you know, maybe get your priorities in line. Get your priorities in line. Take care of the fucking country instead of worrying about your Twitter followers. You know, maybe. Maybe do your job. Do your job. Do your job. I know you're, you're old and senile and you got lots of problems. Do your freaking job. Do your job. Don't worry about Twitter. No one cares. No one cares about Twitter. You know, this, this doesn't make you a better person because you have 3 million followers. No, it doesn't. You know what makes you a better person? Fighting ridiculous tax plans that are being shoved through the Senate. That's what makes you a better person. So, what you got, John McCain? What you got? Let's see it. Uh, all right, one more thing on, so no, I got a couple more things on social. Uh, this one actually goes back to what we talked about last week, and I think the week before we talked about it a little, and that would be the creepy kid stuff on YouTube and, and all that that's been going on and how YouTube is trying to combat that with basically their algorithm. Well, they came out this week and they announced that, and my, let me point out that Google, or YouTube is owned by Google. It, it's under the Google umbrella. Uh, so Google is looking to hire 10,000, 10,000, not 10, 10,000 YouTube reviews to basically go through all of YouTube and review all of these things and flag anything that, sh that is inappropriate for YouTube. That stuff that we talked about, this, the inappropriate kid videos and all that good stuff. So I think what's happening is they're taking a step in the right direction because I called them out multiple times and I've called out Facebook for the same stuff using just their algorithm. And that's how they're, 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 that's what they're using to track all this down. Their algorithm can't keep up with the amount of people that are doing stuff on YouTube. In fact, 10,000 Google employees probably can't even keep up with the amount of stuff that's going through YouTube on a daily basis. But it's better than a freaking algorithm that is, clearly isn't doing good, a good enough job combating these inappropriate videos. So good on you, Google. I'm hoping that this will work. I'm hoping that YouTube um, can turn into, a, not that YouTube is a bad place or a bad social platform, but I'm hoping it will get better and continue to get better because of this. So we'll see what happens. Uh, and if you need a job, uh, you know, maybe go apply with Google. You can sit and look at YouTube videos all day, which I can tell you can become tedious. Uh, when I when I first got out of college, actually I was still in, still in college, I think, when I was doing this, uh, worked for a little company called 86 Technologies. They are a web filtration company. 
Uh, and I worked in what they called the mudroom, and I basically had to go in and review sites. I was reviewing sites, uh, so I was joke with my friends. I was being paid uh, to look at porn for eight hours a day. Now, it becomes tedious. Trust me, it becomes tedious, and you get very, very tired of it. You do. Um, yes, Darshan, I can hook you up with, uh, with the Google reviewers. I'm assuming you're saying it sounds like my kind of job to uh, the YouTube view and <laughs> not watching porn all day, but maybe it is watching porn all day. I don't know. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Um, all right, one more thing on social, and I don't know if anyone's even seen this one going on because this was kind of back of my radar. You know, I didn't, hadn't been seeing a lot of it, uh, but it, it popped up at one point, and then it popped up again, and that would be this, this young lady in India who's a bit of an Instagram star, and she had all these Instagram posts that were coming out, and she was telling stories about all this plastic surgery that she was getting to look like Angelina Jolie. And she was posting photos of, like after each surgery. And this was going on for like a year or two where she was saying, look at, uh, look at all this plastic surgery I'm getting to look like Angelina Jolie. And if you look at the photos, she looks like a zombie Angelina Jolie. In fact, that's kind of what she got dubbed was zombified Angelina Jolie. Well, it turns out, we just found out about a week ago, uh, that she is a total fraud. And I shouldn't even say total fraud because that's what I'm seeing here on the internet and everything. Total fraud, total fraud. Well, she was doing this on purpose. So what happened was she was using makeup to make it look like she was getting crazy plastic surgery. Contacts and makeup to make it look like she was getting crazy plastic surgery. And then on top of that, she was also using, utilizing Photoshop to edit the photos to make it look even more like Angelina Jolie and all that good stuff. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, and, like I said, total fraud, I wouldn't say total fraud. What she did was she found a niche. And remember when I said, don't do the invisible box challenge, find something you're talented at? You know? And this is probably something she was talented at. And people were following her. People were following her. She has a huge Instagram following. I wouldn't have followed her. That'd be like following the, uh, the human Ken guy. Like, I, I don't need to see that, whether it's real or not. Um, but good on her. But additionally, it goes to show you, you don't know what you're looking at. Just keep that in mind, wall fans. Whenever you, just because you see it on the internet, doesn't make it true. Doesn't make it real. Because we have things like makeup and Photoshop and all that other stuff. And people can just say whatever they want on the internet. You know? It's interesting the way that works. All right, we got a second. We're going to get into some TV, film, and books and theater? Hmm. Maybe a little bit of theater this week. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but I do want to point out our beer for this week. And that would be a tasty little brew from Ballast Point Brewing Company. Uh, and they are a brewery out of San Diego. I've got some love for San Diego. All of you should know that if you're new to the podcast. I grew up in San Diego, and I love San Diego craft brew. Uh, and this would be the Fathom IPA from Ballast Point Brewing Company. I believe it's a new one, but I'm not super familiar with Ballast Point. I'm sure one of my beer drinking friends will tell me, no, that's been around for a couple years. I had not had it before, uh, but it is a Fathom IPA. It is a lighter alcohol content IPA. It is not quite a session IPA, but it is about 6%, so it's a little lighter than the 7 to 8s that you see a lot of. Uh, and it, it definitely has that IPA taste. It's still a hoppy IPA, but I'm enjoying it. I would recommend it. Again, if you're an IPA fan, I always say this when I've got these kind of hoppier IPAs on the show. Um, really, you're going to like it if you're an IPA fan. Uh, and if you're not an IPA fan, I can't guarantee you'll like it. I would say try it either way. Uh, but Fathom IPA from Ballast Point Brewing Company out of San Diego. Uh, so check them out. Especially if you haven't had Ballast Point. they got lots of tasty beers um, other than IPAs and everything else, even though they're from San Diego. They do make beers other than IPAs. Uh, so does Stone. You just wouldn't realize it because so much of their stuff is hoppy IPA stuff. Um, we are going to circle back again here. We're going to some TV, film, books, and possibly theater. We're going to circle back here because I talked uh, last week or the week before about the short that was being shown in front of the Disney film, hey Chris, uh, the Disney film Coco. And we talked about it and how it was just blatant cash grab by Disney to sell products for Frozen. Hey Bridget. Uh, there we go. On-air producer Bridget is here. We're, we're very tangented today, Bridget, but number one wall fan Darshan is here. So we're trying to keep it together, trying to keep it together. Uh, but Bridget's here to now keep me in line, and, and hopefully we're not going to get as tangented. Uh, but nonetheless, Disney announced uh, end of last week, no, really this past weekend, that they're removing the 
uh, the Frozen short from all of the, uh, the showings of Coco in theaters starting December 8th. I believe that was the correct date. Yes, December 8th. They will remove it from all of the Frozen uh, showings in all the theaters. And clearly this is from the backlash that they had gotten uh, for making a blatant cash grab and, uh, and, and really just, I don't want to say ruining, but just minimizing the, like, the, the creative content that they're putting out there which is kind of how I look at it. Um, and again, with Disney, everything is a blatant cash grab. Um, in fact, don't forget, next week, everyone, wall fans and everyone alike, you can go see next Thursday or Friday, Empire Strikes Back 2. It's going to be in theaters. You know, who's Ray's father? So derivative. Can you tell him a little bit? <laughs> I'm just teasing. Uh, but Empire Strikes Back 2 is coming out next week, December 15th. So make sure you have your tickets. Probably can't get tickets to Empire 2 anymore. Empire Strikes Back, not Vader's son. I'm just kidding. Luke's in that one, right? I don't know. I can't keep up with uh, the Star Wars stuff, but I just realized. And in fact, I forgot to put this in my notes, but I'm glad Bridget is here. This isn't even in my notes, but I found this one out yesterday. And I should caveat this with, it doesn't have anything to do with the Walt Disney Company as much as I give them a hard time. There's a little company out of Australia. A company that is known for making sex toys. Starting next week, they're releasing a line of Star Wars sex toys. That's right, Star Wars themed sex toys in conjunction with the release of Empire Strikes Back 2. Because everyone needs a Star Wars sex toy. Don't you need a Star Wars vibrator or Star Wars dildo or I don't even, what other kind of sex toys there are? It's, it's probably all lightsabers. I imagine it's just a bunch of lightsabers, right? Like lightsabers in 18 different colors and they vibrate in different ways. I don't even know. Um, but it's kind of funny, and I guarantee Disney's going to try to shut this one down as quick as they can because that's what they do. Uh, Disney is literally the company that sues schools for painting Mickey on the side of a building. Not even kidding. Look it up if you want. Um, that's a real thing. So we'll see what happens there. But more importantly, I would like to think that Go Tell Us The Wall podcast was ahead of the curve on this one. Because what is the word that we have for those stupid little penguin things that are going to be in Empire Strikes? <laughs> the options are limitless. Chris, do you have one in your cart? You're like your e your Amazon cart right now. Star Wars sex toy. I wouldn't be surprised. Star Wars is or Chris is one of the biggest Star Wars uh, fans that I know, and everyone does need a lightsaber, vibrator, Darshan. We just we took such a turn. We are not family friendly this week. I think my mother's watching. <laughs> but as I was saying, I, I feel like we, thank you, thank you, Bridget. Uh, I feel like we have to take a little bit of credit here, mainly on air producer Bridget. For coining the, the term porgies. Porgies. I mean, this, like, literally, we put it out in the universe, mainly Bridget, who came up with the term, and we continued to use it, and then suddenly Star Wars sex toys pop up. Uh, you know there is a porgy sex toy. If there's not, they have missed the boat if there's not a porgy sex toy, and it should be called a porgy. I, like, we're, right? It's not. If, if, if it's not, they missed the boat. All right. That was a fun tangent, though. See, those tangents are good. I just... Forgot to put it in my notes. <laughs> like, forgot to put it in my notes. Um, but very, very important because I feel like we started that trend of the porgies. Um, and speaking of things that, that this podcast has called out in advance, uh, we're going to circle back on another one. And that would be a little show called 13 Reasons Why. This is a Netflix original show um, that came out, I want to say, last year. They did, like, the first season. It's based on a book, um, from my understanding. Now... I've talked about it on the podcast. It has to do a lot with suicide. And it revolves around suicide. And back when the show first came out, I had read a bunch of articles that talked about how it was romanticizing suicide. And I had warned everyone out there to be aware of it. And I didn't even attempt to watch it because of that. Because I don't want to be close to anything that's even remotely romanticizing suicide. I just don't. It's not healthy uh, for anyone with mental illness. You know, I've never been suicidal despite all of my mental illness I've had to deal with. But it's still not something I want to watch. Well, a bunch of scientists came out this week to caution everyone about 13 reasons why. And they analyzed, obviously did a bunch of studies and all this good stuff, and they realized that since the release of 13 reasons why, since the release of the Netflix show 13 reasons why, there has been a 26% increase, 26% increase in suicides in this country, 26%. That's not a small number, Wall fans. 26%. Yeah. And then on top of that, 
They analyze internet searches. And do, by analyzing the internet searches, uh, they saw a huge, huge uptick in searches for how to commit suicide. So, did the show do it? No. But were we right to caution everyone? Absolutely. 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 Now, these shows have existed many, like, since the beginning of time. There was that, that movie years ago, The Virgin Suicides. Like, you know, I understand. But people need to be cautioned about this. And especially when, if you did look at the ad campaign for it, if I didn't know much about the show and I had a tween, like a tween, if you're not familiar with tween, this would be like someone, a younger teenage kid, I might have let them watch it because it doesn't look like it's going to be a bad show. But looking at this, the analytics for this, I wouldn't want kids watching it. And I would caution any of you to let your kids watch it. And if you are sensitive to something like that, like myself, I would caution you to watch it uh, if you're going into watching it as well. Um, simply because, do we know a show causes suicides? No. But when you see a 26% increase in suicides since the release of something like this, you have to, you have to at least be cautious about it. Um, now, I will, will include the caveat that we had a couple of high-profile suicides over the past year, which I'm sure have also added to that, uh, namely Chester Bennington and... Um, Oh my gosh, I'm blanking on uh, uh, Chris Cornell, uh, who both committed suicide within the past year. So I'm sure that's going to add to an uptick on that as well. But just be aware of 13 Reasons Why. I believe they're doing another season, which is interesting because uh, I, I don't know where the content comes from. I think it's based on a book. Um, but of course, they're, they're going to find a way. Like, like they, they do these things, you know, you, you can find a way to make it. If, it's, if something's popular, you can do an additional season or a sequel or whatever it is, even if there's no actual content for it. Um, so that'll be interesting to kind of follow as that goes along. Uh, all right, a little more. This is where I said we're maybe going to get into a little bit of theater. Maybe a little bit of theater. We never talk theater. Um, I mean, I guess I have a little bit. I, I talked Hamilton a little while back when we got the chance to see that one. Uh, but I do have a funny story from Broadway, namely the Broadway show Cats. That's right, Cats on Broadway, uh, one of the longer-running Broadway shows from my understanding. My wife will, will smack me in the face for not just knowing this offhand because she is a huge theater geek. Um, but Cats on Broadway, apparently they had a, a showing last week, a show last week, uh, at the uh, Neil Simon Theater there, and there was an audience member who had a service dog, who had a service dog. Well, the service dog happened to get away from the audience member, and the service dog, now remember, Wall fans, this was a showing of cats. The service dog then proceeded to chase one of the main characters from Cats, who would be, I've never seen Cats, uh, so forgive me for, for butchering this character name, uh, Bombalarina, Bambularina, chasing uh, Bambularina. Now, it wasn't like a serious, there wasn't like a serious chase going on, it wasn't going all around the theater, but the dog did go after uh, one of the actors in the show, uh, which I find this extremely funny because it was Cats and the stereotype Cats and Dogs. Uh, but we have learned from this because let me do, I will also point out that service, like these are the most behaved dogs you're going to find. It takes so much to even become a service dog. Unless it was one of those fake ones that we've talked about on the podcast, which who knows could have been. Um, and, uh, <laughs> cats is apparently not a dog friendly show. I mean, this was, I don't even know what to, to compare this to. Like, you know, if, what do you even compare this? Like you have a pet bunny and you go to see carrots and it's a bunch of carrots dancing around. The bunny's going to get a little fired up. The bunny, you know, dog's going to get a little fired up. Uh, but I found that quite amusing. On Broadway, you never know what's going to happen in New York. Um, and apparently Cats still still running. I mean, I remember Cats, like, I swear, I swear that was like an 80s thing when that first started and it was like the huge thing. Um, and we've seen all these other shows kind of come and go. I mean, when Rent was like the big, uh, oh, I see, Bridges, I'm seeing your comment. Gotcha. So 13 reasons why... For the next season, they're going to do it from the other character perspectives. So it's still uh, still revolving around the same content. So they've already got the content built in. So for 13 reasons why they're looking at it from other character perspectives. Again, while fans forgive my ignorance, ignorance on the show, I haven't watched it. I don't intend to watch it. Um, but Cats fans, uh, don't take your dog to Broadway to the Cats showing uh, or to the Broadway showing of Cats because dogs like to chase cats. I know this firsthand. My dog used to chase my cat all over the place. When we first moved into the, uh, the, the house I'm currently in, 
uh, about a year ago, we went from, from tile and carpet to hardwood floors, and we had the ridiculous moment where the dog tried to chase the cat, and the cat started to run, and the dog started to run, and they basically were just running in place for like 30 seconds because they were slipping on the hardwood floor. Uh, yes, dogs chase cats. It happens. Um, all right, one more thing. TV, film, books. I have some bad news, most likely, for everyone out there. Uh, don't quote me on this news because it's not confirmed. It's not officially announced, but we did get a quote from a Game of Thrones actress that Game of Thrones season eight, the final season of Game of Thrones, looks like it's not coming until 2019. So we are over a year away uh, from seeing uh, from seeing the final season of Game of Thrones. That's what we're doing, and it's ridiculous. Now. Chris is on here. Chris is going to tell me that there is many, many good reasons, and I get it, production stuff. To me, I'm like, well, can't you just shoot it in a week? Like, the whole season? No, no. I understand there's a lot of moving pieces with it, and I think especially with Game of Thrones, because we've had some actors that were just working actors before Game of Thrones and have become much more popular since Game of Thrones, so I think not only are they dealing with different locations and, a, and huge production value, uh, but they're also dealing with their actors and actresses who are going on to different sets and dealing with other shooting schedules as well. So I'm sure there's good reasoning behind it. Um, however, get on at HBO. I don't know that I'm excited about waiting over a year for the final season of freaking Game of Thrones. And I will point out, Sam Eshmael gets Mr. Robot out every year. We don't have this year and a half wait for Mr. Robot. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm teasing. Game of Thrones is a fantastic show, but I am <laughs> very disappointed uh, that we'll have to be waiting well over a year. It was the same thing when the Stranger Things Super Bowl ad came out, and they were like, Halloween, and we're like, what? <laughs> what? I thought this thing was coming in the spring. No. Halloween, fools. Um, all right, let's move on to some music. Two things in music this week before we get into some serious stuff, because I do have some serious, funny, but also serious stuff that has to be talked about. Uh, and music... I mentioned last week the great Give Me Motion is going on tour starting in January. Uh, so I just want to give you the first date would be January 19th. If you are listening in Virginia, they will be in Virginia on January 19th touring with, uh, I don't have the two acts in front of me. I'm a little biased toward Give Me Motion, obviously, hmm, obviously, got to do it for family. Uh, and Give Me Motion is in, they are incredibly talented. Uh, so check them out. If you haven't checked out the EP, check out GiveMeMotion.com. Listen to all of his music for free. Uh, but they are going on tour starting in January. First tour stop is going to be January 19th in Virginia. We'll share the entire tour list and everything. It's mostly an East Coast tour. So those of you that are listening on the West Coast, unfortunately, I don't think you're going to see Give Me Motion uh, on, on this tour. But, of course, always, always new stuff happening and, and all that good stuff. Um, and, of course, follow Give Me Motion on all the social platforms, just search Gimme Motion and he will keep you updated with all the concerts, upcoming shows, upcoming videos. Uh, in fact, there was a new video that was dropped last week. I can't remember if I mentioned that. I think that was actually dropped right after last episode and that would be the music video for Autumn in America. So head on over to YouTube uh, or Facebook or GiveMeMotion.com. See, Dante is good about putting stuff everywhere. I am not. <laughs> I'm usually like, oh wait, where did I put that? Oh yeah. And now it's like you gotta, it's, everything's got to be posted everywhere. And Patreon, it's, it's hard to keep up with. It's hard to keep up with. Um, so we'll see what happens. I'll be posting the tour stuff. It's going to be a good tour. If you're on the East Coast, check it out. Uh, and I do want to point out one more thing that was just announced today. Just announced today. The great band Blink-182. I'm an unapologetic Blink-182 fan because of San Diego punk rock music and silly, ridiculous San Diego punk rock music. Well, their newest album, California... Just today was certified gold. The entire album is now officially a gold album. I have a feeling that's going to continue to climb from there. Um, but additionally, the Bored to Death single from the album, it was also certified gold, uh, a gold single. And I will tell you right now, I think it's just a matter of time before we see Rabbit Hole uh, actually pop up as a gold single as well. Um, I, that's actually my personal favorite song on the album by far, by far, is Rabbit Hole. Uh, and, and we'll see. Hopefully, that'll continue to climb as well. I'm sure it's. Uh, I sure. I'm sure it hasn't climbed as much because they've got a, got a couple f bombs in there, and those tend tend to keep those songs lower on the list. Uh, but we'll see what happens there because I'm sure, most of Blink 182 they just put out gold. It's gold, 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 and then some junk too, some crap. But it's good nonetheless. And we at Go Tell Us the Wall are unapologetic Blink 182 fans. 
Unapologetic being the important word there. Um, all right, we're going to get into a little bit of sports. But this week, it is not really like full sports. Because this is, this is an important thing that I want to talk about. Um, and I'm trying to find his exact tweet. God, I can't find his tweet here. Um, so there is a sportscaster named Brent Musburger. He's actually really well known and really well respected in the industry. He has, he's called uh, national championships for college, um, all NFL games, all kinds of stuff. Really well respected. Uh, now, he's been around for a long time. He's, he's well into his 70s. I want to say he's probably 75, uh, 74, 75 around there. I don't have his exact age right in front of me. But what he did, uh, end of last week, beginning of this week, I can't remember the exact date, was he tweeted out, because there's been a lot of talk about violence in the NFL, which we have talked about on this podcast, and injuries, and, and head injuries, and CTE, and all that other stuff, and how the NFL is greedy and ends up covering up a lot of stuff. Well, Brent Musburger, can't, because they're finally, they're taking more and more steps to combat the violence and the injuries and everything else. Well, Brent Musburger put out a tweet basically saying that violence and sex appeal are part of the NFL. And I quote you here, snowflakes should deal with it. Snowflakes should deal with it. Well, Brent Musburger, I'd like to point out to you, I understand sex and violence sucks. I get it. I often talk on this podcast about how everything is hypersexualized in this culture, in this society. I get it. I get it. Sex sells. Violence sells. But you know what? We're better than that. We're smarter than that. Most of us are. Brent Musburger is not smarter than that. And I do want to point out another thing that most likely many of you are not aware of. So Brent Musburger called the national championship game in 2013. This was Notre Dame versus Alabama. The quarterback for Alabama had a very attractive girlfriend sitting in the stands. Very attractive girlfriend who also happened to be Miss Alabama. Her name is Catherine Webb. Uh, and she was sitting in the stands. And Brent Musburger, camera pans over to her. And they point her out in the stands. Brent Musburger spent a good 20 minutes talking about how gorgeous she was. And literally drooling over her. If you're interested in it, I'm sure you can YouTube it. I happen to be watching it live and going, dude, that's creepy old man status. So when we couple that with sex and violence as part of the game, deal with it. Snowflakes? Snowflakes? Snowflakes. Well, Brent Musburger, these snowflakes are taking over the world. This is our world, and you're living in it now. And I think we've hit a point where really, I hit a point a long time ago with the Orange Menace, and then we see it with John McCain. We've hit a point where, you know what? Old, bigoted, white dudes, it's time to step aside. It's time to step aside. You know Brett Musburger, you're 74, 75. Maybe just go sit at home for a little while. Because we don't need this crap. I don't want my daughter seeing this kind of stuff. Violence and sex appeal are part of the part of the game. Snowflake. I don't want her seeing some dirty old man, dirty, disgusting old man, drooling over a 20, 21 year old college student. No one wants to see that. And Mr. Musburger, you've shown your colors. So people like Brent Musburger, John McCain, more importantly, the Orange Menace, it's time for you guys to step aside. Because this is the kind of crap that you're putting out in the world. This is the kind of crap that we have to deal with. This is the kind of crap that I have to explain to my daughter why this happens. The day the Orange Menace was elected, I said, how am I going to explain to my daughter that we somehow elected a man who thinks it's okay to grab a woman by the pussy? And I'm done. I'm done. I want to see these guys go off into oblivion. Not saying go die, but just go away. Just go away. Go sit in your home. You got plenty of money. All those guys have plenty of money. We're sick of hearing from you. Sick of hearing from you. I'm going to tell you right now, Brent Musburger, this snowflake, I ain't shutting up. And I know many other snowflakes that ain't shutting up. So be ready, Mr. Musburger. Be ready. All right, I do have one more piece of sporting news. Sporting news, it's not really sports. We do have an Olympics coming up here, uh, starting in February, the 2018 Winter Olympics that will be happening in, I almost said Sochi. That was the last Winter Olympics. Uh, that They're happening in Pyong, Pyong uh, Korea. I, I, forgive me, I don't mean in an insulting way, I just I can't pronounce 
uh, the name of the city that it's actually happening in, but it's happening in Korea. Uh, Pyeongchang or Pyeongchang. I think that's it. Pyeongchang. Am I pronouncing it? I love, I always do this. I ask on-air producer Bridget to give me pronunciations, and then I realize that she's not actually talking to me. She is uh, typing to me. But I believe it's Pyeongchang. Uh, and the interesting development that happened over the past few days is the International Olympic Committee, who we've talked about on this podcast before, they tend to be a little greedy, tend to be a little slimy, uh, they have officially banned the country of Russia from the Olympics. The entire country of Russia will not be at the Olympics. The flag will not fly at the Olympics. Uh, they will not have their country in, the, par- in the, the parade of athletes, which if you watch the Olympics, you know the, the Olympics open and close with a parade of all the countries walking in to whatever stadium that they're having the opening ceremonies or closing ceremonies. Um, and I found this interesting. In addition to that, because I was a little bit worried, because you know, I mean, and I'm not going to get into the reasons. There's a, a lot of controversy that, that they were doing a lot of illegal doping, and doping is a term like for steroids and, and, and drugs that can help with performance, uh, athletic performance. They call it doping is kind of the term that's thrown around. And they were caught in a big doping uh, controversy for the Olympics that was in Sochi. And this is kind of the backlash from that. In fact, the, the last Summer Olympics in 2016 in Rio, the Russian track team, other Russian athletes were allowed to go. Russian track and field team was not allowed to participate in any way. Um, and I found this interesting because the slimy, greedy, filthy International Olympic Committee uh, has more balls than the White House of the United States of America uh, because they're going after Russia, whereas the White House and the Orange Menace just sit here and basically acts as a puppet for Mr. Vladimir Putin over there when we all know, we all know some shit's going on, Orange Menace. And it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. As snowflakes, avalanche time, motherfucker. Avalanche. That's what's going to happen. All right, let's get into some tech. <laughs> Texts? Tech. Tech. Tech, tech, tech. We got some tech this week. A bunch of stuff I didn't have a chance to talk about last week. Uh, and one of those would be a new announcement from Microsoft that they are working uh, on rolling out something called Windows Sets. Now, we don't have a lot of information on this yet. It's going to be rolling out if you're a Windows user, Microsoft user. Uh, it, it's going to be interesting because they're using the term sets to refer to multiple app, apps or, or programs working together. So let's say you, know, you use a video editing program and then you, you use YouTube or whatever it might be. Those can now, well, best case scenario, they can work in conjunction with each other. So it'll be interesting to see. If this works the way it's supposed to, it's going to be a game changer, uh, and it could even help here at Go Tell Us The Wall podcast when it comes to all the different stuff that has to cycle through this studio uh, and, and go live and everything else. So we'll see. I will keep everyone updated on that. I don't know that it's going to be anything, uh, but there's a lot of buzz kind of in the tech computer world that it could be a great thing, and we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Also from Microsoft recently, they announced a new photo app that's coming out, uh, and this is this is photo app for PC, but it would also be for your phone. Now, you don't have to have a Windows phone. We always joke about the two people in the entire world that actually have a Windows phone, which is probably the total amount of people in the entire world that do have an app, a Windows phone. Um, so you, any phone it'll connect with, but what it'll do is actually sync photos to your PC directly. So photos that you're taking will sync directly to your PC. Now, we have stuff like that. If you're a Dropbox user, you've noticed it can automatically upload photos and stuff. Uh, the, the Microsoft Cloud OneDrive, uh, they have a similar thing. And in fact, Google Photos, if you're an Android user, you know that your photos automatically back up to Google Photos. The interesting thing about this is I'll be curious to see if it's pulling full res photos. Full res photos, because the, the, the thing with Google Photos is unless you're paying a lot, I don't want to say a lot, unless you're paying additional uh, for storage for, high, for full res photos from your phone, it's actually not pulling full res photos from your phone. So keep that in mind. If you're someone that takes a lot of photos on your phone, and I'm sure it's something similar with iPhones, um, it's, it's simply a bandwidth issue, you're not getting full res photos. Which is So what I do is I go through, and especially having a one-year-old at home, I'm constantly uploading photos manually to Dropbox because I don't have enough space in my Dropbox uh, to just automatically sync them. And I pull all those photos, and then they go to my computer. So I'll be really curious to see um, no one understands the cloud. That's true. No one does understand the cloud. Um, but I'll be curious because... With this one, it's actually, it's obviously going through the cloud, but it's going to throw it straight onto your PC hard drive. So it's going to actually go to your computer as opposed to just being in the cloud, which is good too. I mean, no one understands the cloud, as Bridget is saying, uh, but it'll be nice to actually have them hard copies in there uh, going directly to your computer. And then if you're someone like me, it's taking a lot of photos with your phone or videos or whatever it might be, and just uploading them through 
Dropbox on your computer. It's kind of taken out of step, so we'll see. But if it's not full res, it's useless <laughs> because Google Photos is already doing that, and uh, and Microsoft, you're a little late to the game. Um, so just a little bit, little heads up for all of you out there. If you're looking to get a new Chromebook, you know, if, if you're in the market for a new Chromebook, um, which I guess I would recommend if you don't want to get a full-on PC or, you know, uh, because they do tend to be a little little less expensive than buying a PC or a Mac for that matter. I mean, a Mac, you got to take out a second mortgage on your home to get a Mac uh, computer. That's just how it is. That's what they do. They know they can get that kind of money, and so they're doing it. People line up to give them money from their second mortgage on their home so they can get a new computer. I joke. Apple, I don't think, I think Microsoft has kind of caught up with Apple on that front. Um, I haven't looked at pricing in a while because they've been on the same damn computer for uh, three years now. But if you are in the market for a Chromebook, I would recommend, I guess recommend waiting because a new patent was just uncovered uh, that Google submitted for. And this was for a Chromebook hinge that opens itself. It's a motorized hinge for a Chromebook. So if you're one of those many, many people in the world that just can't like actually lift your computer open, there's apparently a solution for you. And that would be the motorized hinge on the Chromebook. Uh, so apparently you wave your hand and it opens up for you. I just, I don't, I don't see a real huge use here. Um, the only thing I could see a use for is, is anyone who, uh, who has a disability and maybe don't, you know, doesn't, they don't have hands to use. And if you're talking like you can wave something in front of it or you can talk to it and it opens, I can see the appeal there. I just don't see the everyday appeal of this uh, because personally, I'm a pretty lazy dude. Like I, I can be pretty, pretty lazy. I don't have trouble opening my computer. <laughs> I just don't get it. Uh, so in my opinion, pretty superfluous. We'll hear from the wall fans and see if, uh, see if anyone out there actually wants a motorized hinge on their Chromebook or, or any computer for that matter. I, I, don't, I don't see a use. But if, if you're in the market for a Chromebook and that sounds like something interesting to you, maybe hold off for a little while here because you could have a motorized hinge. I, I, I feel like I would just be like, no, who um, <laughs> waved my hand for Thank you, Bridget. <laughs> Bridget can't even be bothered to wave her hand. So Bridget would need uh, the motorized hinge that opens when you blink. <laughs> when you blink. If computer's opening all over the place. It's not I'm just kidding, uh, but for the truly lacy individual, motorized hinge on the Chromebook. Uh, this one, I actually want to get into a little bit. I'm just going to top line it. We're running a little short on time, uh, and that would be an announcement from Google, and it's not confirmed yet, but it looks like because if you're not aware, Google actually owns Nest. I've talked about Nest cans, Nest thermostats, all that stuff. Um, it's very finicky and annoying, uh, but I use it nonetheless, and, uh, and Apparently, what they're looking at doing is rolling the Nest hardware team up into the Google hardware team. So it would all be the same team, not a Nest hardware team and a Google hardware team, but they would work on the same team. And the reason this is interesting is because this would essentially be better for Google integration with Nest and like so Nest and Google Home or whatever it might be. That makes it easier for them to integrate, which also makes sense from a business standpoint, because what's happening is Google Home was really I don't want to say ahead of the game, but they were at the top of the front of the pack there. Uh, but because Amazon's able to integrate so much more stuff, and now Apple is coming out with all their stuff, and you have third-party uh, smart speakers and all this good stuff, Google's kind of fallen back a little bit. And there's a lot of things that they've promised over the past year because Google Home now is just over a year old. It's been out for just over a year. Uh, there's a lot of stuff they were promising from the beginning. It still hasn't happened. So I think that we're seeing that kind of come to fruition, and they're rolling it up into the Google hardware team in order to make that more streamlined. So we'll see. Uh, but I, I think it's going to be a good thing either way. How quickly things move, we'll, we'll never know. Um, I'm going to save this. I've got another post office story. You all love the post office stories, or, well, U.S. Postal Service stories, but I'm going to save this one because we are running a little short on time. We are running a little short on time. i got to get out there and check the damage, make sure more stuff's not, uh, not catching on fire. All right, I do want to get serious here for just a moment with our common sense... Uh, common sense section and this serves really as a PSA and maybe this is me being a snowflake and you know what I don't care I don't care if this is me being a snowflake and in fact I talked about this briefly last year around the holiday season and that would be the misuse of mental illness terms especially pertaining to Christmas and that's happened last year when Target put out a, a shirt or sweatshirt or something that said OCD obsessive Christmas disorder marginalizing the mental illness that is OCD. 
And I'm seeing this stuff pop up again this year. And everyone thinks it's funny. You know, I'm uh, uh, obsessive Christmas disorder and, and obsessive ornament placement disorder. Yeah, I get it. And maybe I'm being a little sensitive. But let me ask you something, wall fans. Because OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, is a mental illness. It is a mental illness. It may not be as ser- considered as serious as some other mental illnesses. Remember, there are degrees of obsessive compulsive disorder and obsessive anxiety disorder. So, we know this is insulting. Maybe you don't think it's insulting. And if you don't think it's insulting, I'm going to tell you right now. If you think that's okay, obsessive Christmas disorder, and, and marketing that, and marginalizing that, think about this. Would you make a shirt that says CP, Christmas palsy? Would you do that? Would you wear that? Would that be okay? Because if you think that's okay, then that's a much bigger conversation you have to have. But if you realize that you shouldn't be marginalizing cerebral palsy, then you also realize you shouldn't be marginalizing obsessive compulsive disorder or obsessive anxiety disorder or any disorder, any mental illness. It's not something that's meant to be marketed. It's not something that's meant to be laughed at. And that comes from someone who's dealt with it their entire life entire life. So be smart. Be smart, wall fans. You know, and if, if you want to do it, I'm not going to stop you from doing it. I'm not going to rip your, you know, sign down or tell you to take your shirt off or, you know, no, no. But just be aware of those around you. Be aware of those around you and how things can be insensitive. You know, don't be like Brent Musburger. Hmm. Don't be like Brent Musburger. All right, um, I'm going to save, you know what, we're going to, s- no, we got a little bit of time. I want to talk, we're going we're gonna to move through some of this stuff real quick. Uh, so, new trend that's happening right now for Christmas this year, and maybe it's been a trend for a couple years and it just hasn't been commercialized as much. I think it, it's been a thing, but it's gotten really big this year. And that would be the upside down Christmas tree. In fact, I'm seeing that there's a couple of public places, I don't know if any of them were in Southern California, but that have this upside down Christmas tree. If you haven't seen one of these, it's literally a Christmas tree upside down. So the, the larger part of the base is at the top, uh, and the, the small part where you would usually put your star or angel or whatever you put up there is at the bottom. So some people attach them to the ceiling and it hangs down, and some, and some people apparently have a stand that you just put the tree in, and then it's got the, the larger part at the top, which is fine. People think it's weird. People think, there's been stories about people thinking it's insulting, which, again, I don't understand how it's insulting. It's a freaking tree. Like, are you insulting Jesus? Like, what does Jesus have to do with a evergreen tree? I, I don't understand. So, like, no, it's not insulting. The thing I found weird was, um, and the, the one thing that I did see that makes sense is ornament hanging. Now, if you think about it, when you hang ornaments on a tree the traditional way, they're kind of tucked in there. With a the tree upside down, the ornaments, like, hang and show. So I totally get, like, that makes sense. Um, so whatever you want upside down Christmas, do your thing, do your thing down for it. Um, the thing that I found interesting is I decided, I was like, who's selling these things? Can you just get them anywhere? You can wall fans. You can get them anywhere. And I will tell you right now, if you go on target.com and look at a six foot Christmas tree and then a six foot upside down Christmas tree, it is literally, literally, I looked this up myself, unless it's changed in the past couple days, literally double the price for an upside down Christmas tree. It's the same tree. It just sits upside down. What did we talk about a few weeks ago pertaining to ugly Christmas sweaters and kind of stuff that cycles through? Well, this was a cool trend. And now capitalism took over. And now places like Target are realizing that they can overcharge people and people are going to pay it. So, I'm not saying don't pay more for a tree, but this is just another example of the trend, the movement of trends. You know, that's another example of it. So I find that interesting. Uh, if you're going to get an upside-down tree, try not to buy it at Target. Uh, maybe make your own. You know, it can't be that hard. No, it probably is. I don't know. Uh, all right, another thing in common sense, Walmart. They had some t-shirts that were recently pulled off of their site. Um, oh, Hotel Del in uh, San Diego. Hotel Del Coronado has an upside-down tree. I think I did see that one on social media. Thank you. Uh, they have an upside-down tree. Which, again, I'm fine with. Just don't get price gouged. Don't get price gouged on anything. Uh, Walmart had some t-shirts on their site. I want to look at exactly what these... Uh, what these say, where the heck is it? 
So I'm looking at, okay, they had some, some, uh, some t-shirts up on their site, and this became popular last year with the Orange Menace running around talking about fake news and all this other crap that he likes to spew, literally spew. I, I just see steam coming out of his mouth whenever I see him talking. It makes me sick. I can't even watch him. Um, and they're making a big deal about journalists and fake news and all this other stuff. Well, apparently Walmart had a shirt on their website that said, rope, tree, rope, period, tree, period, journalist, period, some assembly required. I would like to, like, I don't even think I need to point out all the things that are wrong with this. Um, but the thing that hits me the most, hits me the most, because I hate the Orange Menace. I've never sat on this podcast and said, let's hang him. Think about that. I don't really know anyone that has. They just don't want to be president. They don't want to kill him. But this was on Walmart.com. They've since pulled it down because they realized, hello, this is ridiculous. But what kills me is the kind of society that we live in. Everything is so violent. I mean, according to Brent Musburger, it's all violence and sex. But we, the wall fans, with the common sense, we know it's not all violent. And it makes me a little sad. It really does. Uh, it makes me a little sad that we live in this kind of society. Subjectivity is key here. Subjectivity is key because this is twofold bad. Two Thank you, Darshan. Darshan's saying I'm a respectable person. I really appreciate that because a lot of people say I'm not respectable. I lost a lot of fans when I defended uh, racial injustice protests. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably didn't need those fans. Um, but this is twofold bad. Simply because lynching in this country, and especially with Nazis running around and the KKK coming to the forefront, lynching in this country is not something that should ever be joked about. Additionally, violence should not ever be joked about. And additionally, if you kill journalism, we're all screwed. Maybe you don't like journalism, you know. I saw, some, I saw an article on Fox News today that said, you crazy, man. Whoever posted it, you're crazy. But I respect journalism. But this is the world we live in, where violence is at the forefront. Journalism is disrespected, which we've talked about on this podcast recently. LA Weekly just got gutted. Disrespected in this country. So do better. Do better. Now, Wall fans, I'm not telling you to do better because you all do better. There's a reason you listen to this. Uh, but, you know, maybe people that aren't doing better, do better. Do better. All right. I have one more thing on common sense. And this is an awesome thing. And so we're going to end, well, end the common sense on a high note. And that would be an announcement that came out today involving the amazingly talented Kevin Smith and additionally, the amazingly talented Jason Mewes. If you don't know who Jason Mewes is, he is Jay of Jay and Silent Bob. Jay of Jay and Silent Bob. Oh, and I just remembered. I've, God, I was trying to tell a story the other day, and I couldn't remember where I heard the story. And I, just remember, I just realized I heard it from Kevin Smith. <laughs> like, just, this, is, this happens. We get a little tangented. Um, but they announced a, a brand agreement. Um, so any of you out there, this one may work for Go Tell Us His Wall, this brand agreement. So if anyone out there is working on brand agreements, we're actually, I'm actually getting into discussions on some brand agreements, but this one would fit well with Go Tell Us His Wall podcast because we are pro-medical marijuana. And that would be this brand deal that just came out for Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes. And it's a Canadian-based company out of Toronto called Believe. And it's B-E-L-E-A-V-E-V-E. -E -E -V -E. So not Believe like the traditional, but Believe. Uh, and they are a medical marijuana company. And so they have signed a deal with Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes to work on uh, new strains of marijuana. And obviously they're going to do some marketing and all that stuff. Uh, but I find this interesting because we are, we're really getting into, we're hitting a point where the old, bigoted, white dudes can't stop it anymore. And here's another example of that. And I have the utmost respect for Kevin Smith. He's the reason I went to film school. Um, I am unapologetic Kevin Smith fan. I really don't care. Give me a hard time. I just don't care what you think. I like him. You know, uh, Dogma, I still say to this day, whether you're religious or not, everyone needs to watch Dogma uh, and, all, and as you watch it, realize the amazing message that comes out of it and realize it's not insulting to any religion on the face of the earth. It's not. There's no insult there. In fact, it's, it's more uplifting to really every religion on the face of the earth. So check out Dogma. Uh, but I do want to get you... This quote directly from Kevin Smith regarding his brand deal with Believe. 
And he said, and I quote, it's no secret that I'm a fan of cannabis. It helps me sleep at night and keeps my blood, blood pressure down. I've seen cannabis drastically improve the lives of some of the closest people in my life and believe it could be a viable alternative to the use of traditional painkillers, opioids. Uh, gosh, lost my uh, painkillers. This culminating with the changing laws and perceptions surrounding cannabis has me very excited to team up with Believe, a group I believe to be one of the most innovative in the Canadian cannabis space. So keep an eye out for Kevin Smith, cannabis coming soon in conjunction with Believe out of Toronto, Canada. Um, that's going to finish us up for this week. I have some stuff I'm just going to push to next week. Oh, oh man. We're going to push it a couple weeks. For those of you that joined a little bit late, no podcast next week. I'm dealing with holiday family stuff. Uh, the week after uh, will be a new episode or possibly the highly anticipated Go Tell to the Wall Christmas special. And I talked at the top of the show. I'll talk to Bridget. wasn't at the top of the show. I'll talk to her a little bit about some ideas for that, and we'll, we'll get into it. We'll, we'll be well, 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 well prepared for that. In fact, I will tell you right now, I already have my hat for the Christmas special. I don't have my ugly sweater yet, but I got my hat, and we're ready for it. So look forward to that. Um, but again, no episode next week. Uh, simply because I'm dealing with holiday family madness and my, my, I, I won't, just won't be able to get in the studio for this. Um, but that's going to do it for us. This has been episode 39. I apologize. I know we we're a little bit uh, ranty this week. It's simply because I'm just worn thin with all the fires going on. In fact, I'm going to leave the studio uh, after I finish up here and, and really go check on everyone um, and, and, and make sure everyone's home is still safe because it, it's it's... It's not fun. It's not fun. Um, it's scary to watch the news. It's scary to worry about your friends and family. Um, but when, when you've seen it firsthand, the way I have and the way some of my friends and family have, uh, it's, it's just it's that much scarier. Um, so really, our thoughts are out there. And, and if, if you're in Southern California and you can help in any way, you know, post on Facebook. I've been posting on Facebook. In fact, I got my mother in San Diego. They were having trouble getting horses out of one of the fires. Uh, and I had my mother send it out to her entire horse rescue group and they actually sent some people up from San Diego uh, who are of course now heading back down to San Diego because now they're dealing with fires down there. Um, so our thoughts are going out to all of them and if, if you're in Southern California and you can help in any way, uh, post it on Facebook, even just shoot me a message on the Facebook page, whatever it is, um, and I'll, I'll just kind of file you in there as where you are and what you can do and all that other good stuff because it, it's, it's going to get worse before it gets better. That, that's, that's the unfortunate thing here is it's going to get worse before it gets better. Uh, but on that note, thank you all for joining me this week. Uh, we will be back in two weeks with either episode 40 or the Christmas special. And you know, a nice round episode number means we're going off the rails for episode 40 because that's what we did for 20. That's what we did for 30 was so far off the rails. Uh, so that's probably going to happen. Look forward to that. Look forward to episode 40. But more importantly, look forward to the highly anticipated first annual Go Tell to the Wall Christmas special coming up for you in the next two weeks. Uh, Bridget, as always, thank you for joining. Keep me in line. Uh, and number one wall fan, Darshan, thanks for being here. Chris, I agree. Dogma does rock. Uh, and we'll see you in two weeks. This has been uh, episode thir Facebook Live. Stick around for a minute. We'll, we'll have some fun for a second. Uh, but for those of you just listening on the podcast, this has been episode 39 of Go Tell Us The Wall podcast. I am your host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke, coming at you with very, very much passion this week because you always got to have passion. Uh, but more importantly, wall fans, remember... No matter who you meet, no matter where you go, no matter what you do, and no matter why you do it, always, always, always use common sense. All right, wall fans, uh, thank you for joining. Thank you, number one wall fan Darshan. That was like a full episode for you. You're, you're, you're banking, you're banking your number one wall fan this here, so you're getting a little further along there. Um, and apologies again. We had a little bit of a power surge. Bridget, you missed that. I, I'll, we'll t I'll tell you about it later, but I had a little power surge. Surprisingly, didn't lose the Facebook live feed, but I did, did lose the actual podcast, um, which as much as I love having these videos and having fun with you, the actual podcast itself is the more important, uh, more important piece of the whole puzzle, I guess you could say. Um, and additionally, uh, new tripod this week that I'm just trying out, and I, th I think I'm liking it. If you guys are saying anything weird on your end as far as framing, um, let me know. Let me know on the Facebook page. Let me know on the video, wherever it is. Uh, but, of course, thank you all for joining. I really appreciate you all being here. I'm going to get rid of this message here. There we go. Um, and we'll see you in two weeks. Two weeks, Christmas special or episode 40. i got to look at the calendar. We'll figure it out. i got to confer with Bridget, see what we can do, get some ideas going. 
It's going to happen. We're going to have some fun. Uh, but we'll see you soon. And remember, Wall fans, always have passion and always, always, always use common sense. And now we get the little official Bridget freeze.